Okay, so how well do you actually understand basic math? Well, if you have pretty strong basic math skills, this should be a very easy problem to solve without the aid of a calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. We have negative one squared minus negative one in parentheses squared, and this is a multiple choice question. All right, so here are the answers. So A is zero, B is negative one, C is negative two, and D is a positive two. All right, so the only rule here is no calculators, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now a lot of you are probably saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is easy. I can get this right. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even need to write out the steps, right? I'll just do it all in my brain. Well, I'm gonna encourage you not to do that because if you make an error, you won't know exactly where you went wrong. It's always best to write out each step, you know, even with a problem like this. But let's go ahead and take a look at the right answer. The correct answer is C, negative two. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and A plus, a 100% and a certificate of excellence because it's clear to me you know a thing or two about uh, powers and exponents and order of operations and positive and negative numbers. These are the skills that you need to uh, understand in order to solve this problem. All right, now, uh, in particular, uh, there's a lot of confusion with this uh, type of situation in mathematics, okay? A lot of people don't know the difference between negative one squared and negative one in parentheses squared or any value uh, where uh, it's not, where the number is in parentheses and not in parentheses. Of course, I'm gonna address all of this. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and get started right now. Okay, so uh, here is our problem. And let's suppose you didn't know what to do. You're like, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, I, first of all, I don't like math. And second of all, I haven't seen this since 1977 when disco was a big thing. Well, listen, uh, you know, uh, don't feel bad if you don't remember this stuff, but you should always feel compelled to at least take a guess, right? Because that way you're just participating and, you know, trying to learn something from this little video. But, uh, you know, let's take a look at our choices here. I mean, uh, these choices all seem like maybe, you know, we could, uh, you know, are reasonable possible values, right? So let's say zero. Well, let's see, can we get a zero from these numbers? Well, maybe this is like a positive one and maybe this turns out to be a positive one. So one minus one would be zero. So yeah, I mean, that could be, you know, a situation where this could make sense, right? If you didn't really know what's going on between these two things. So if you guessed a zero, that's a reasonable guess. Unfortunately, it's wrong. But uh, here uh, we have negative two and positive two. I don't think it's, uh, it would, well, negative one shouldn't be, uh, hopefully nobody guessed negative one, unless you just took a complete wild guess, which is perfectly fine as well. But here we have one, these ones. So maybe some of you are like, well, negative and negative, oh, yeah, it's like positive. So maybe this is like a positive one plus another positive one. Maybe it is two, okay? Now, again, that's a pretty good guess. And I think that's uh, definitely um, way better than negative one. So zero and positive two would be good, reasonable guesses, but they are wrong because obviously the answer is a negative two. So the only way to really get this problem right without guessing or getting lucky is to know what you're doing. Okay, so here is the situation. Here's our problem. Now there's a lot going on here. It seems like a small little problem, but actually we have different uh, things that we need to understand in math. First of all, we have a power situation and we obviously have po uh, a negative number and we're gonna have some positive no numbers here in a second. And then we have multiple operations, okay? We have a power and we have subtraction. So when you have more than one mathematical operation in a problem, you need to consider the order of operations. So let's go ahead and kind of look at the problem in this respect. There's basically three issues here or three skills that you need to really understand in order to get this little problem uh, right. Now, the first is 
that negative 1 squared, like this, is not the same as negative 1 squared in parentheses. Okay, so if you thought these were the same, uh, they're definitely not. I'm going to explain this here in a second. So if you didn't know this, you could easily get this problem wrong. The second thing is the order of operations, because here we have parentheses, we have powers, we have subtraction. So we're going to have to keep this in mind. And then uh, obviously you need to know a thing or two about working with positive and negative numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And we'll start with this uh, first uh, part of the problem, because this is go probably going to be the most common place where a lot of people got confused here. So negative 1 squared versus negative 1 squared, uh, where negative 1 is in the parentheses. Now, this could be, uh, you know, negative 2 squared and negative 2 in parentheses. It doesn't make a difference what the number is. It's when we're taking powers of numbers in parentheses and not in parentheses, and there's a negative number involved. All right, so let's start with this right here. So negative 1 squared means, matter of fact, let's do something uh, even uh, easier. 3 squared is what? Well, this is a power. This is the base. This is the exponent. So this is saying, hey, take 3 and multiply it by itself two times, right? 3 times 3, I'm sorry, times 2. So if we have 3 times 4, 3 to the 4th, that's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 3 to the 4th, right? Positive 3. So uh, that's just the real basic, you know, powers and exponents. Hopefully all of you out there understand that. So here, what this is saying is take negative 1 and multiply it by itself two times. So uh, negative 1 times negative 1. Now, again, if you know something about positive and negative numbers, you know that a negative times a negative is a positive. So negative 1 times a negative 1 is a positive 1. Now, uh, I'm writing the little plus sign right here, uh, positive 1, just to accentuate that this is a positive value. But when you have a number like 1 by itself, it's implied that that indeed is positive. Okay, so when you see a number like 7, that's positive 7. Uh, this is negative 7. We don't need to write a positive 7 like so. All right, so uh, again, a negative 1 in parentheses squared turns out to be a positive 1. Well, this is an entirely different situation. Negative 1 squared, there's actually two things going on here. So we have a power right here, and we really kind of have multiplication. So one way to think of this problem is the following, negative 1 times uh, 1 squared, okay? Negative 1 times 1 squared. That's kind of what this problem is because we have to, this negative has nothing to do with the power, okay? This is not, negative 1 is not the base. This 2 is only acting upon this positive 1. So this is really the opposite of 1 squared, Okay, so we have to figure out what 1 squared is equal to. So 1 times 1 is, of course, 1. And then the opposite of a positive 1 is, or the negative of a positive 1 is negative 1. So if we want to uh, clearly take negative 1 and square it, if that is our intent, then from a mathematical standpoint, we have to put that in parentheses. Okay, so if I'm like, yeah, I want negative 1 squared. Great, fantastic. Put that in parentheses because that's how you, you know how we write that, right? So this would be negative 1 squared. And then, of course, that would be positive 1. But if you have this situation, negative 1 squared, well, this is the opposite of 1 squared. This is the negative of the result of 1 squared. So it's, you kind of think of this again um, as understanding uh, the order of operations, PEMDAS, right, which is parentheses first, okay, do what's inside parentheses, exponents, and then multiplication. So here we're going to do exponents or powers first and then multiplication next. So we'll take 1 squared, which is positive 1, times negative 1. So, you know, any kind of uh, these explanations that make sense to you, as long as you understand that when you see a negative 1 squared without parentheses, it's going to be negative 1 or negative 2, whatever the case might be. All right, so I kind of stress this because my decades of teaching math and grading, maybe like 10 million, you know, homework, test quizzes, well, maybe not that many, but you understand what I'm saying. I've seen this, uh, conf you know, uh, place of confusion over and over and over again. All right, so if you made this mistake, no problem. Hopefully, uh, you'll never make it again in your life. But let's go ahead and now take a look at the problem. All right, so now that we know clearly that we have negative 1 squared, and we know that that now is equal to ne negative 1. So negative 1 squared, remember, we have to follow the order of operations, which is PEMDAS. Let me kind of squeeze this in here real quick because we have powers going on here, and we have subtraction. 
So do we have parentheses? Uh, for those of you that don't know about PEMDAS, this stands for uh, uh, parentheses, E's, exponents, or powers, M and D is multiplication and division. You're going to do whatever you see first from left to right. And A and S is addition and subtraction. You're going to do uh, whatever you see first from left to right. Now, if you want to know more about the order of operations or any of this stuff that we're talking about, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that could help you out. But uh, here again, what we have to do is we have to do powers first. Right? As a matter of fact, let me write this up here a little bit neater. PEMDAS, just so we do this the right way. Okay, so do we have any parentheses? Yes. So there's parentheses right here. Okay, so this again, this is a checklist. This goes from uh, left to right. But is there anything to do inside of the parentheses? No, there isn't anything like negative 1 plus 8 uh, squared. So there's there's no operations to do inside of the parentheses. So effectively, uh, we know we're, we're done with that step. Now, E stands for exponents, but you can think of that as power. So do we have any powers? Yes, indeed, we have two. So we're going to have to address this and this, and that's what we're doing in this step. So once again, negative 1 squared is negative 1, negative 1 in parentheses squared is a positive 1. All right, so that is taking the first step uh, using the order of operations. And of course, all we have left is negative 1 minus 1, which we have to think about it because uh, we are dealing with positive and negative numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, don't you just love the way I kind of sneak this in? You're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know you, uh, you know, you love to talk, you love to speak, you like to drag things out. Well, yes, maybe you're right, you know, but really uh, what I'm trying to do is empower people. My channel is about encouraging people never, ever, ever to give up on math, but particularly what I'm trying to stop at all costs is to stop this type of thinking. I'm not smart enough to learn math or things like that. I'm not smart enough. I can't do that. Uh, you know, math is not my thing. I'll never learn this. Da, 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 da. Really, my passion, the reason why I have this channel is to stop you from um, having these kind of, you know, this negative feedback loop because I'm telling you right now, you can absolutely be successful in math. Now, so for some of you, it's going to be much easier than others. But uh, if you want to learn math, you can. Now, I'm not telling you it doesn't require work. <laughs> Matter of fact, it absolutely requires work. It requires a lot of time and effort. And there'll be bumps along the way. That's just a normal part of the process. So if you're looking for a smooth, guaranteed, shortcut, you know, fast way to master mathematics, I don't have it for you. Maybe you have to go check out some other YouTube channel. But what I am telling you is that you're capable of learning because so many people through my decades and decades and decades, I, I've been doing this for a long, long time, and I've been speaking to people that from the 1950s, 1940s, 1960s, had some teacher that got it stuck in their brain that they were not smart enough to learn math. And that really took them on a different trajectory in life. Okay, So if you want to learn math, I am here to help. Okay, But the best way to learn math is to really get yourself into a full course of instruction so you make sure you get everything. And if you're interested in my full math courses, you can find links to those in the description of this video. All right, so thanks for giving me a little, little bit of time to uh, state what I do. But really, okay, if you don't have this mental part down in terms of uh, learning anything, you're going to have a tough time, okay, improving. So the number one starting point for those of you that really want to improve in math is to make sure, check in on your mindset. Make sure you don't have any, you know, self-doubt, okay? So just take it one step at a time, stick with it, you will be successful. All right, so now here's our problem, negative one minus one. All right, so what do we do here? Well, we have a negative one minus one. We have to be careful because uh, we are dealing with negative numbers. Well, we could take this negative and turn it into a plus negative, right? So that's what you want to do. So really what we have is negative one plus negative one. Now, if, again, if you don't know what I'm doing here, working with positive and negative numbers, you know, just put this on your math shopping list. Ah, I got to pick up some skills on positive, negative numbers, order of operations, whatever the case is. It's okay if you don't understand, but you know, itemize what you don't know and then work on your weaknesses. But negative one plus negative one is a negative two, which of course is our answer. Okay, so if you made it with me all the way to the end of this video, well, I definitely appreciate that. I hope you got some value out of this. And if you already knew this, maybe you got some, you know, basic entertainment value. 
Either way, thank you so much for uh, participating in this video. I definitely need your support. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can stay around as long as possible to continue to make uh, more math videos. I think last year in 2023, I made somewhere on the order of 730 videos. My goal for 2024 when I'm posting this video is to make a uh, 1,000 videos, which will include uh, short videos. I'll be, I'll be working on that soon for those of you that might be interested. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.